Hello everybody, this is General Yanis, and today in Death Card Tactics I'm going to be looking at the Foul Blight Spawn and making an extensive review of this very interesting model and is he um, our most useful Virion? And the answer is probably yes. And, um, and uh, basically having the ability to make a no charging zone, allowing us to fight first and being like, okay, come and get it if you want it, like the Spartans said to the Persians, Molon Lave. All right, so today uh, on the on the 2nd of May 2021, I've started reading the Lords of the Silence novel and really good stuff in the book so far. I've come halfway through, so really interesting to, <laughs> to read more of it. And uh, Vorx, the Siege Master and the company uh, are, are quite fun to read. In this uh, video, as I said, a deep dive into the Foul Blight spawn, the Elite 13 Virion that brings uh, heavy uh, short range shooting as well as game winning or game defy defining abilities and since uh, the war of the spider uh, psychic awakening at the end of eighth i don't think i have ever uh, filled in an army uh, not taking the foul blight spawn uh, with his uh, very good weapon and the very good abilities so i will be looking at his stats and uh, and the weapon and the weapon damage uh, the, his abilities and combos and then useful traits and synergies and how to use him and and some examples so let's uh, get started so let's look at the Biologus uh, stats and weapons. Uh, so he's, um, he costs 75 points and he has the very standard Virion profile with a 5 inch move, 3 plus weapon skill, ballistic skill, uh, strength 4, toughness 5, 4 wounds, 4 attacks, 8 leadership, and 3 plus save. He has disgusting resilience, of course, and he has also the contagions ability. His keywords are Bubonic Astartes, and he has a Plague Company and Virion, and Infantry and Character, of course. And uh, looking at his abilities, his innate ability is the Putrefying Stink. And at the start of the fight phase, you select one unit within three inches of, of, of the Fall Blight Spawn. That unit is not uh, eligible to fight until after all eligible units from our army have fought. So basically, uh, we can select one unit and say, this unit fights last, uh, whether it is our fight phase or the opponent's fight phase. But three inches is quite limited range for this one. But uh, thankfully, he has uh, access to a specific relic for the Foul Blight Spawn, the Revolting Stench Vats, uh, which gives him this aura that enemy units within six inches cannot make any use of rules uh, allowing them to fight first. And those units don't count as having charged irrespective of any abilities they might have. So this is a very strong uh, strong ability, and I'll get back to that uh, a bit later. Looking at his weapons, he has the Plague Sprayer, the big flamer that is connected to his uh, tank <laughs> with all sort of nasty fluids in there. Uh, it's a, a Assault D6 weapon, 12-inch range, Plague weapon, strength 7, AP minus 3, damage 2, and it's an auto hit weapon. Unfortunately, it went down from damage 3 from the previous codex, but still very potent weapon. He also carries the unholy heads grenade. I guess it's the, the one grenade he holds with the other arm. It's a 2d6 D grenade, 6 inch, plague weapon, strength 5, AP minus 1, damage 1. It has blast, and it's only once per battle use. Uh, he also has access to a weapon relic, the Vomitrix. Uh, if we take the Mortarion Sons uh, Plague Company, which is an Assault 7 weapon, uh, and, and basically it has the same profile as the Plague Sprayer, but you just get many more uh, attacks, double the number of attacks on average uh, you would be getting with this relic. So, of course, if you're taking Mortarion Sun, consider, you can consider uh, this relic. I'll, I'll get back to this as well. So, as I said, the standard supporting character profile uh, the access to the revolting stench, uh, stench vats relic, giving him a six inch aura that negates uh, charge bonuses and denies opponent fight first. And a very strong plague flamer weapon that can do deal good damage. And this uh, Mortarion Sons relic to upgrade the plague's pure is a possibility. Looking at the Foul Blight Spawn's weapon damage, uh, unlike the other Virion characters, Foul Blight Spawn uh, has. Uh, some weapons that are interesting and can deal a lot of damage on his own. Most of our other Virion characters, they just have a plasma pistol or injector pistol or some something, uh, a plague knife or something. They are not doing a lot of damage by themselves, but the Foul Blight Spawn 
his plague flamer is an is a, is a very strong weapon and he doesn't per se buff the damage of our own unit so it's quite different from the other virion we have access to the plague sprayer is an awesome weapon especially versus uh, wound two targets marine targets uh, each unsaved hit with a good ap can kill a, a marine um, it's an assault weapon this is also really good because it allows the foul blight spawn to advance and shoot and he doesn't suffer any penalty from shooting and advancing because it's an auto hit weapon so his threat range even if the range of the weapon is only 12 inches his threat range can be quite large so he has the five inch move plus the d6 advance roll plus the 12 inch range so it would be uh, 18 to 23 inches uh, advancing regarding depending on what you what you what you hit here you can also add uh, on top six inch uh, range with the overwhelming generosity strategy for one command point increasing his strength range uh, together with advancing between 24 and 29 inches so you can move you can advance him you can add the six inch range and then you can really uh, make damage also from considerable uh, distance from where you started the the plague sprayer is a good weapon to apply pathogens to uh, because it has a good baseline damage and the viscous death for only 10 points uh, brings the weapon up to strength 8 instead of strength 7 so that's uh, definitely helpful against the uh, stronger and tougher opponents and allows uh, re-rolling the number of shots so if we have the d6 shots on average we will be getting three and a half shots uh, if we if we re-roll everything that's uh, the ones and twos and threes should give us on average 4.25 shots so we'll be getting 20 percent more uh, shots hitting with for the 10 extra points and it's definitely worth it i will show you on the next page uh, you can also just say okay i'm just re-rolling ones and twos the threes might be three shots could be okay for some occasions but on average you would be benefiting re-rolling one two and threes if you play the Mortarion's Chosen Sons, the Vomitrix Relic will give him even more damage with seven shots. However, then in that case, you can take the Revolting Stench Vats, which is really good. Uh, so maybe if you do Mortarion's Chosen Sons, you could have two Foul Blight spawn, one with um, with the Vomitrix Relic, and then with one with the Revolting Stench Vats to maximize, let's say, this play company. And maybe I will make a special list uh, to show you and as an example uh, for Mortarion's Chosen Sons. They are a bit yeah they are a bit niche and uh, a bit uh, plague weapon plague flamer oriented so uh, let's now look at the the, we the damage output from these weapons the plague sprayer with different pathogens and the relic uh, so here we see with the blue line we have the plague sprayer and the average damage not point corrected across uh, the 31 targets i'm typically simulating so here you have targets with very good invul saves three pluses here we have targets with four plus invul saves five plus invul saves and here we have a bunch of targets with um, no invul saves and they are differing in the armor save and the toughness a number of wounds uh, so we can see overall he can do uh, some quite good damage three four wounds on average against a multitude of enemy units if we add the viscous death we can see the orange line he is doing more damage across the board uh, better strength of the weapon helping against some targets and then it's the number of shots because you can reroll ones and twos and, and threes uh, so you would on average get more shots you can see with the gray line it's the vomitrix relic uh, so that of course this has the highest uh, damage output uh, with the yellow line you can see the unholy heads grenade he can use once per battle two d6 shots but it's uh, never better even than an almost not never better than the than the plague sprayer even without any buffs to the plague sprayer uh, only against a very chaff opponent maybe you have a bit better uh, chance to use the unholy heads grenade so here you see the summary across all these targets so three wounds on average with a plague sprayer four wounds on average with a plague sprayer with viscous death and six wounds on average uh, with a vomitrix relics here you can see the point corrected so you can see Paying the 10 points still pays off uh, for the plague sprayer. The unholy heads grenade, as, as I said, not as good as the plague sprayer, but you could use it uh, if he's locked in engagement range. You can use it uh, with a blightening stratagem in engagement range. You would be doing two and a half wounds on average uh, as a bonus damage to try to clear out something, uh, keeping him in engagement range. So, and then if we compare his damage output uh, with other death. Death card units, 
so here we can see uh, for the 12 inch uh, range shooting, the average damage per 100 points across all the 31 targets. And this is a baseline damage with no additional buffs included and no rerolls on something like this. Um, and here you see that the foul blight spawn with the vomitrix, with the viscous death, or just the, the pure foul blight spawn with the plague sprayer, he deals the most damage per 100 points corrected uh, compared to all other uh, death card units I've analyzed so far. The Contemptor comes close, and of course you can buff the Contemptor with rerolls and, and, other, and other abilities, but the Foul Blight Spawn uh, has a very good damage output on his own compared to everything else uh, baseline in our arsenal. So let's look at uh, his abilities and the revolting stench vats, the aura he gets from the Relic and the Purifying Stink. So this is the main utility and the main ability of the Foul Blight Spawn. Uh, coming from the relic and the revolting stench vats, as I said, uh, it negate it gives him a six inch aura which negates the fight first ability of the opponent, so it allows our units to strike before the opponent would have the chance. So, in this example, we have the vile blight spawn escorting a death card melee unit, it could be plague marines, it could be death shroud, it could be something that, that is quite good in melee. Here, uh, they get charged by uh, units A and B. And those uh, units make the charges, but they are within uh, the six inch uh, bubble of, uh, of the Foul Blight Spawn, which means uh, these units will not be benefiting from any, and uh, they don't count as having charged, so they will not be benefiting by Shock Assault or Hateful Assault, getting more attacks, more wounds, or some of these armies that are getting benefits from having charged. After uh, any other units uh, have fought in other parts of the table where the the opponent made the charge, then it's a defender uh, to select first a unit to fight. So now we can activate our melee unit here and they can strike uh, either A or B or both and, and make significant damage to them before they can be activated by the opponent. Then the opponent could choose this one or that one. And then, and then basically we have, we have a big opportunity here to, to cripple these enemy units before they have the chance to make damage to our melee strong unit. If we look at a bit more complicated example where we are using the Putrefying Stink as well. Uh, so the Putrefying Stink is his innate ability that if you are within three inches, uh, you can select one enemy uh, unit uh, and then you, you tell that unit basically to fight last in the queue. Um, so uh, we have this, uh, this innate ability can also be used in a phase, uh, in our own fight phase. Uh, and if, if our units start engaged in combat, uh, then we can, um, we can uh, the defender would have to select, could select first, but we can make one unit fight last. So in this example, uh, unit A and B again charge our melee unit that is protected, let's say, with the aura of the foul blight spawn. Uh, here uh, we have a character a lord, for example, Lord of Contagion, making a heroic intervention on this unit B here. So the Foul Blight Spawn in this example is within three inches of this unit and selects the unit B to fight for uh, last. Uh, and then after the rest of the table, if any other charges uh, have, been, have been activated first, then here we can select, for example, the, the melee unit here first. They can fight against unit A, taking them out or severely crippling, crippling them. Uh, then the opponent could select the remainders of unit A to fight back. He cannot select unit B because we selected uh, as with the putrefying stink, they have to fight last. This gives uh, our Lord here, uh, we can activate him after they activate A. Then the Lord maybe takes out a lot of them and then the B unit cannot do so much when it's their turn. So here we utilize both abilities uh, to our advantage, getting uh, strategic benefits, uh, dealing dealing a lot of damage to the units before they, the enemy, before they have any chance to take our units out. So the Revolting Stench uh, Relic Aura can really be game defining uh, because Death Guard, we have really a lot of uh, lethal or very dangerous melee units. We have the Plague Marines with melee can do severe damage to any unit, the Death Shroud, the Possessed, Spawn, Blight Lords, Foul Blight, uh, uh, 30 blow drones with mowers, 
our lords, demon princes, etc. All of them can do significant damage if they fight first. And maybe they can even wipe opponents out if we get the chance to, to, to strike first. Uh, it is a six inch aura. Can we do something to increase it even further? Uh, the Fugaris Helm Relic, which is typically used to increase an aura, is out of the question since the Foul Blight Spawn already needs to have the Relic Revolting Stench Vats to get the aura in the first place. So we can't use Fugaris Helm Relic, but we can use the Ferryman Stratagem. So if we take the Plague Company, the Ferryman, in the command phase, we can select the Foul Blight Spawn, we can select one Virion and then select one of their auras. So then we select the Revolting Stench Relic Aura and then we will be adding six inch to the range. Uh, so this, then he becomes, he will have a 12 inch um, range uh, denying the opponent charges for a whole turn. And this is really huge. And I have an example from Tabletop Simulator. So you can see how big part of the board he actually can negate. So he could be uh, with a ferryman, a couple of units, let's say escorting a unit of terminators and possessed and plague marines, several of those units could be protected and they can basically act first where it makes sense, uh, crippling the opponent. So really um, preventing the enemy from taking advantage and charging us first. So uh, warlord trades and some other synergies and uses to consider with a foul blight spawn. The Foul Blight Spawn, as I said, provides short range firepower as well as denying the opponent uh, the ability to fight first. Uh, so he should be following frontline units of Marines, Terminators, etc. Uh, foot slogging along, for example, with melee Plague Marines or in a Rhino with, with Plague Marines. Uh, from this forward position, he will be close to the thick of the battle. Uh, he's therefore a good candidate for the Arch Contaminator Warlord trade, helping the melee output of the core units he would be escorting in normal uh, conditions. So uh, when the Plague Marines fight first, they also benefit from rerolling uh, all two wound rolls or Terminators or whatever we have. Uh, so Arch Contaminator Warlord trade, uh, together with the Revolting Stench Vats and the Foul Blight Spawn in the front of the lines, uh, close to the front of the lines, is a really strong combo. Other alternatives could be uh, Plague Company Contagions. Again, he will be close to the front, uh, maybe applying this, uh, these contagions, but he doesn't have any, let's say, added benefits for the range of his contagions. So if you take a Lord, uh, maybe a Lord of Contagion, for example, or Typhus, probably it's better to select those. It could be the inexorable Ferric Blight. If you take the Ferryman, he can have the droning uh, severely, let's say, uh, impacting the movement characteristic of, of the opponents and Mortarions, Anvil, Gloaming, Bloat, etc. Uh, some synergy more could be together with Noxious Blightbringer. The Noxious Blightbringer could be part of the group Foot Slogging, Plague Marines with a Foul Blight Spawn, for example, uh, adding one inch to their movement or advance rolls, so increasing in essence the threat range of the Plague Sprayer by one inch and also moving the whole group forward uh, a bit quicker. Um, the Foul Blight Spawn, as the rest of our Virion characters, is quite squishy character. Uh, he doesn't have invul save, he only has four wounds, so he should be protected by the Lookout Sir, by the units he's escorting, and avoid coming into melee himself. He, he doesn't have any strong melee weapons. If he finds himself in melee, he can use the Blightening with his grenades uh, in our turn to try to thin out the opponent. So uh, showing you some uh, combo example from Table Sub Simulator. So in this case, Foul Blight Spawn with a Relic escorts a 10-man Plague Marine squad uh, with two flails. Uh, it's not, I'm not showing you the full squad with all the melee weapons. And in this example, a unit of 20 Drukari Witches uh, charge the Plague Marines and are looking uh, dangerously to do a lo loads of damage and they would be able to have 81 attacks uh, with their Hecatari Blades. And uh, I'm assuming here they also have the combat rugs for plus one weapon skill. They will be hitting on twos. But thanks to the Foul Blight Spawn, our Plague Marines can strike first. And for example, here I'm just uh, trying the Trench Fighter stratagem, trying to clear out as many witches as possible before they can have a chance to fight back. And then I will show you if we didn't have the Foul Blight Spawn, how much damage could these uh, witches have been doing on our Plague Marines. So over to the tabletop. 
<clears throat> so let me show you an example here from Tabletop Simulator. So here we have a unit of, uh, of Plague Marines. Behind them we have a Foul Blight Spawn uh, model. And um, here we can see uh, his 6 inch range Revolting Stance Vats. Um, remember, if we have the ferryman, we can increase the 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 aura. It becomes 12 inch, and you can increase this with numpad 4. And you can see how much of the board you actually are covering with one file platform model. Uh, you can have several units uh, fully within this uh, this aura, so that we are sure that uh, the enemy cannot fight first uh, if they charge uh, our units. Uh, his putrefying stink ability is only uh, three inch so it can be quite difficult uh, to make it count i mean you if you're a bit behind you can put the enemy into this purifying stink um, uh, where you can select them to fight absolutely last you could do it if you if you really plug him close but okay then the enemy in some cases could come from other sides etc but let's say if we just increase uh, his aura again to six inches with numpad four we can see now that the plague marines they cannot be charged uh, and, uh, for, and the, if they can be charged but then we will be fighting first so here we have uh, for example 20 witches here and they make their charge uh, ignorant of the foul blight spawn or they don't care so now uh, we have the possibility to fight first and in this example we have for example the, the plague marines uh, two of them could have flails and the other just have uh, knives so let's start with uh, making some damage with uh, with the flails so we will be having uh, 12, uh, 12 uh, attacks with a flail, and we are we are hitting on three pluses. So uh, not super good, but uh, we we got seven hits, and and uh, here we um, we are wounding them on uh, two pluses, re-rolling once. So we hit uh, six times, and they are the witches have a four plus inval save against the melee attacks. So two of them are dead, and then uh, we select the, um, the trench fighters. Uh, so we will have uh, the, the the eight rest guys will will attack um, twenty times with the knives plus one for the um, for the um, uh, for the champion, and then with um, with the stratagem trench fighters we will having ten attacks more with a knife. So let's make this work. Three pluses here. Not the best rolling here, but we heal still hit 19 times, and we're wounding on twos also here, re-rolling once, play weapons, and we got 15 hits, and they are still saving on four plus inval saves. So here we actually killed 14 more. So one, two, three, four, five, six, twelve. And now there are only, let's say, four witches left, and it's very difficult for them to do uh, any damage. They will only be having, um, uh, they will be having um, four four attacks, uh, four attacks each, basically three plus one for the Hecatory blade. Uh, so now we really uh, crush them before they could do something. But if they had the chance to attack first, they would have been able to do 81 attacks with their blades. Uh, so let's see if we just uh, just roll 40 dice here. So if we roll 40 dice for their attacking, they are they will if we select the two plus weapon skill as their 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 combat drug, they were hitting on twos. So they hit 33 times with the first batch, and then now they're wounding on fives. And the sixes are extra good. I don't know if they have some some rerolls here, but here we would be saving uh, on five pluses, and the others are on four pluses. So let's see here, five pluses. So one plague marine is dead, and four pluses for this. So uh, three plague marines are dead, just from uh, from the half the attacks, and if they had forty dice more. Let's see here. So hitting on twos because we upgrade their weapon skill and then wounding on fives. Oh, that was a good roll. So uh, the sixes we need to save with, uh, they get better AP, so we need to save them with five pluses. Let's see. So one more Plague Marine dead and one is damaged and the other 
let's see here those we need to save on four pluses so uh, two more plague marines are dead uh, so here you see if if uh, we didn't have the foul blight spawn or the these witches and i know they could have other shenanigans as well they could take out and really annihilate our squads uh, only having a little bit left but uh, just by the foul blight spawn and our ability to fight first in this case uh, we could basically wipe out the whole squad before they could do any serious threat so yeah and remember the the, the 12 inch uh, together with the ferryman is 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 really a huge aura uh, creating a big part of the table where your opponent uh, will have a big trouble uh, charging our good melee units so there you have it uh, so summary and final thoughts uh, the fault light spawn is a very useful and strong virion character for our army he adds a lot of short-range firepower with the Plague Sprayer. The Pathogen Viscous Death is really a good deal for 10 points. His greatest utility, however, comes from the Revolting Stensvats Relic, giving him the 6-inch uh, aura where opponents don't count as having charged and cannot fight first. This gives our units a big advantage. Uh, our units are typically very strong in melee, and they will get a good opportunity to strike first and severely cripple or even destroy the enemy unit before they have the chance to make any good damage to our to our units. Additional benefit from his three inch innate ability to select one unit to fight last, helpful also on our fight phase, but three inch, you have to be really close to the, uh, to the enemy. Uh, the revolting stench vats aura uh, has a very good, uh, uh, very good synergy with the ferryman on droning wing stratagem and making the aura become 12 inch for a whole turn and creating a huge zone denying the enemy uh, good charge opportunities or making him think twice before charging uh, our main line and then uh, a strong synergy with the arch contaminator warlord trait as the foul blight spawn will be up the field and close to the action arch contaminator helps our core units in melee and the short range uh, where the foul blight spawn will be active uh, so all in all, I think he's a really great character, and I, I find it very difficult to find any reason not to include the Foul Blight Spawn with the Revolting Stance Vats uh, to, the, to, the, to the army lists. So this uh, concludes the video. What do you think about the Foul Blight Spawn? Um, have you been successful using him? I can just say, for example, my first battle report uh, at Scud Linian, he was really game defining. Uh, the Vanguard veterans uh, charged my Plague Marines, and then uh, the Plague Marines took out four or five uh, Vanguard veterans, and they only we only lost one two Plague Marines in return, and we took we took the squad out basically thanks to the Foul Blight Spawn, and that was like the game winning moment of that game. Um, if you like this video, please press like, uh, leave some comments, and subscribe to the channel where I will be bringing you much more uh, Death Card content. If you want to uh, support my efforts even further, please visit my Patreon page, uh, patreon.com General Yanis, and join the roadmap and discussions for the next videos and uh, bring your ideas and suggestions there. Uh, and uh, with his words, uh, General Yanis is signing out. Stay safe out there and bye-bye.